Uh, well, for our next session, I'd like to invite onto the stage Lee and Becky from our friends at Studio 3T, who are going to tell you all about how to use it and successfully introduce MongoDB across all teams and skill levels. Afternoon, evening. Thanks for coming to our talk about sharing the MongoDB love and getting uh, basically everybody on your team as excited about MongoDB as you undoubtedly are. Uh, we're from Studio 3T, makers of Studio 3T and Robo 3T. These are pictures of our faces. If you need references, I'm the one on the right. My name is uh, Lee Cooper. I'm a product manager with 3T, and I've been spending the last year talking to teams of all shapes and sizes that are working with MongoDB to get a feel for what it is that they need, what kind of roadblocks they're encountering, and things we can do to help them out. I'm joined today by Becky. I'll let her introduce herself. Hello. Uh, my name is Becky, and I am the enterprise sales team lead, um, and I've spent years talking to people in the MongoDB community um, to help them learn how to use tools in order to make sure everybody is properly supported in their process of either getting started working with MongoDB for the first time or getting the most out of it if they're already working with MongoDB. So yeah, a huge theme of the conference, you probably heard it if you were here in the morning for the, uh, the keynote, is enabling developers to build faster and re kind of removing friction for working with MongoDB. That's a big part of what we do as well. Uh, and so we're going to get pretty tactical in this about some things that you can do for different types of uh, roadblocks that you encounter, how to overcome them. But just before we do that, it'd probably be useful for us to have a talk about what kinds of uh, teams encounter trouble. Um, we see some big categories in the folks that we're talking to. The first is this group right here, juniors, uh, junior developers, or non-technical roles. Uh, once your MongoDB application is in production, we see a lot of teams uh, other than the development team, of course, need access to data. So this could be something like a support team that needs to modify information that's in a customer's database. This could be uh, a sales lead needing to look at inventory that's spread for different regions across different collections. Uh, but yeah, we see a large number of maybe even developers that have really great experience with front end but are not quite used to working with MongoDB. And so this is a huge group that has trouble getting up to speed very quickly with MongoDB. Another thing that we see is a, a very large group of developers that have huge familiarity with SQL. Uh, and we hear this a lot. We hear, I know how to do this in SQL. I could just, it would only take me a minute in SQL. Uh, and so maybe they're familiar with relational database management, but when it comes to schema lists, and you know, it's a little bit of a different mindset shift, and a lot of people need help making that, crossing that gap. And then we also see this other problem. We encounter this in our own teams, teams of mixability. In a lot of teams, there's one person who's really experienced with MongoDB or really, really good at it. And getting the knowledge out of that person's head and to the rest of the team members to help level up everybody at the same time is something that a lot of teams struggle with. And so these are the sorts of people um, that are not moving as quickly as they maybe would like with MongoDB, and it manifests in a couple different ways. Here are some of the things that we hear. We hear a lot, I have a job to do, I can't stop and spend a couple weeks skilling up you know, to learn a whole new query language. Uh, we hear a lot of panic at embedded objects, arrays, what does that mean? Some of these uh, querying in these conditions are a little different. We also hear, like I said, it would only take me a second to do in SQL, or we also hear uh, JSON maybe breaks our workflow, so a lot of other downstream data consumers and constituents are working mostly with tabular data, and then when you're giving them JSON data, no clue how to work with that. Uh, same thing, most of our data is relational. Why can't we just use a relational database? Why can't it just be tabular? Uh, I don't know how to join two tables in MongoDB. Where is the foreign key? And we also know that uh, data integrity is really important in making sure that your data comes in right. Finding schema anomalies means something different in a schemaless context, and a lot of teams struggle with that. Same with performance. When I run into a performance issue, where do I even start? And so these are some of the ways that teams struggle. This is kind of how it might be showing up in maybe your teams. And Becky is going to talk about some solutions and some specific reasons why this pops up. She's going to paint a picture of what it's like. Yeah. So. Um when, you're talking to, when we are talking to people who are a little bit intimidated about getting started working with MongoDB, there's one thing that tends to come up really frequently, and that is the shell. So um, everybody here is probably familiar with the shell or Mongosh, have at least seen screenshots or gone through a tutorial. Um, and 
this, the, the Mongo shell and Mongosh, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably because in this context they can be, um, is super powerful. The Mongo shell is very powerful, um, but it's also quite daunting, especially for people getting started on their very first MongoDB project. So to give some context uh, for why the Mongo shell is a little bit daunting, let's talk about some reasons why. The first is getting connected. Um, in order to get connected, you need to import a URI string, know your user credentials, uh, need to know how to authenticate properly. Um, so getting connected means that you need to have some technical expertise in order to be able to connect to your Mongo data from the shell. Um, and then after you've gotten connected the first time, every single time that you're going to be connecting to your data set there, uh, going forward, you're going to need to do the same thing. As we all know, if there's things that you're doing repetitively, um, the less time it takes you, even if it's something that doesn't take that long, you really want to make sure that those repetitive tasks are as fast as possible. Um, and so being able to, uh, having to connect um, through the shell can be a little bit daunting for people who are just getting started their first time. Um, another thing that makes the Mongo shell uh, a little bit daunting is, let's say you've successfully connected, congratulations you are now faced with a blank screen. What you need to do is then figure out how to write queries in order to um, start visualizing the data, start understanding what's in your database. Um, and that means Googling things. So you're gonna need to Google um, everything that you need to do in order to be able to start visualizing your data. Um, and let's take a quick look at what a query looks like. This is a very simple find query um, and the output is two documents, both of which are quite small and have a very basic data structure. But even just looking at this example, we can see that this isn't the easiest way um, to read your data in a human readable format, right? Um, so these are some of the things that make the shell a little bit intimidating for people when getting started for the very first time. So what our presentation is talking about is how to solve some of these things because really we want everybody in your organization to be just as excited about working with MongoDB as you are, especially after leaving this conference. So let's talk about ways to make MongoDB a little bit less daunting for people who've never worked with it before. And really what we're going to be looking at are strategies to properly support and tool the people that are working with MongoDB going forward. And the first step for doing that would be to get a GUI that lets you visualize your data in a table, in a tabular format. This solves two of the things that I mentioned, which are getting connected and visualizing the data. Um, in a GUI that lets you visualize your data in a tabular format, you'll have a connection manager, which means you have a GUI that walks you through step by step uh, how to get connected to your different servers. It will save those connection details. It's easier to share those connection details with colleagues. And then every time that they need to uh, get connected to their data set going forward, those things will be saved. They don't need to be doing that over and over again through the shell. Do it once through a tool and then save those connection details going forward. Um, the second benefit would be the visualization of your data. By having data uh, from MongoDB in a tabular format, this is going to be essentially a great equalizer um, for giving people from different job titles, experience levels, and backgrounds. They're all going to be uh, able to work with the data um, in a way that feels comfortable to them. They're going to have a lot more confidence. Um, as we all know, working with the shell is a challenge. Uh, keeps blinking, but it looks all right. Um, and so uh, everybody in your organization is familiar with spreadsheets. By having data in a tabular format where you can work with it in a format that feels comfortable, you're going to have people a little bit more excited about this new thing that you're um, introducing into the organization. Uh, there's a whole bunch of options for tools that you can use to visualize your data in tabular format. Um, the screenshot that you were looking at before was our tool. Obviously, we're preferential and biased. We think ours is the best. It doesn't really matter which one you get, though. Um, these are a few options that you can choose from in order to start visualizing MongoDB data in a tabular format. So that uh, helps with a couple of the barriers that people struggle with when starting to work with MongoDB for the first time 
getting connected and even just visualizing the data in the database. But being able to see the data is one step. The next step is then being able to query. If you can't actually search the data in the database, that's not a very useful database. So let's now do a deeper dive in querying and what you can do to help the different categories of people that we talked about uh, be ready and confident to start doing those queries that they need to do with MongoDB. Just to revisit um, the categories of folks that Lee introduced us to, here's a couple job titles for each of those categories so that way you have a better idea of what we're talking about. These categories are different for all the organizations that work with MongoDB. Everybody's going to have a different breakdown for these different categories, but these are just some general examples. You know, for the, the first category, what we kind of view this category as is people who have never written a query before. Maybe these are people who've gone through uni and have learned um, how to write code but have not ever worked with the back end before. Um, Category B would be people who have been spending a few years or a few decades working with SQL databases. Um, anyone from somebody who's vaguely familiar with writing a SQL query to somebody who's an expert, we put in category B. Um, and these are people who don't know how to write a Mongo shell query but are very familiar with uh, SQL, or they are familiar with uh, writing a query in SQL syntax. And then the last category is kind of the MongoDB expert, it's very common um, within an organization or even within a single team to have people from vastly different experience levels working with NoSQL. And there tends to be somebody who knows how to fix that perfect aggregate query. And other people will come to that person and ask for assistance. Um, and we break these categories down because the, the type of tools and support that you would give to each of these categories is different. So I wanted to go through and give you um, an overview of how to make sure that these different categories are properly supported as you start working on a MongoDB project. So the first category, first time writing any kind of query, um, we have a, a lovely GIF here. I hope from your angle it's not too blurry, but this is a, a big screen. But uh, So first time writing a query, um, this is a tool that lets you drag and drop fields from the tabular format into a side panel. Each field that you drag, you can choose an operator from a drop-down menu. Um, you can drag and drop as many fields as you want. As we all know, things like embedded objects and arrays are new to people um, in a way that can be a little bit intimidating. This can take the intimidation away from that. Um, they'll be able to drag and drop embedded objects um, and select whatever operator they want in order to write the query, see the query results, um, and whatever workflow that they need to do from that, um, they'd be able to do with a tool as well, whether that be export the data or um, translate the query, what have you, whatever it is that they need to do. And it's useful to point out, too, that this is really great for people that don't know how to form a query, but it's also really useful to do some stuff that's a little bit trickier to remember that you maybe don't have to do all the time. So like mm -hmm. in my case, you know, filtering an array element or finding something that doesn't exist, a little bit hard to remember the syntax for because I don't do it all the time. Useful also to be able to just pop that out without having to remember it or look it up. For sure. Um, and something that we found with uh, folks that are starting a MongoDB project is that downstream consumers of data sources might actually need to access the database directly but don't know how to write a query. Um, and so those folks, the, the consumers of that data, can use a tool like this to actually have direct access to the data. Um, and if you've attended MongoDB's conferences, you know that you can create a view on a data which is queryable. So you could create a view um, in your uh, database and then give downstream consumers access to that view and then they can actually write queries on that view using a tool like this. The next category of folks, we've got a couple different groups here that I'm going to be talking about. The first would be folks who um, have familiarity with SQL syntax, but are probably going to be doing some pretty basic querying, so usually fine queries. And we've got a couple different examples that this video is looping through. Right now we're doing a fine query and updating the data. Um, the first name is being updated, so perhaps you have somebody in production support. Um, there was a mistake made by a client, 
and they've called in and now production support needs to really quickly find that document and update it really quickly, that person does not want to be Googling how to write a fine query in MongoDB in order to fix a production mistake as quickly as possible. Instead, they can use their uh, previous experience with SQL to write a really fast flying query using the SQL syntax and then update that data really quickly. Um, the other flying query that we have here is just uh, maybe a data analyst needs to just pull a report for um, the C-suite really quickly. Um, you can write a fine query in SQL syntax and then just export the results to CSV and email that off really fast. That's something that, again, you're not going to want to be Googling how to write that fine query. Um, and in, instead of having to do that, you can just use a tool like this to get started doing your job from day one with this new project in MongoDB. Um, the next example is still category B, the people who have familiarity with writing SQL queries, but this is getting a little bit more complex. We've got a couple different queries in this video as well. Um, the first query is a group by. Um, maybe that the maybe your application needs to be displaying data in a way that you need to do a group by, um, which would be an aggregate query in MongoDB. But maybe you've never worked with the aggregate pipeline before, but you know exactly how to write that query in SQL syntax. Um, this is a tool that you can use to write that query, um, and then uh, you can translate the query in the query code tab. Um, what we're actually translating here is a join, so that's another thing that we hear a lot of people talk about when they first start working with MongoDB is, well, how do I join collections? Um, in some instances, you might need to do joins. Perhaps you have some analysis on the data set that you need to do that requires um, being able to join those collections. Again, this is another aggregation query in MongoDB. Um, but you can write that join really quickly in SQL and then take a look at the query code tab to start becoming familiar with the MongoDB operators that would be the equivalent of that query. So this is a great way of making sure people can do their job on day one and then take a look at those translations to become more familiar with MongoDB and start learning while doing. Um, instead of having to take a few days off or a week off or a couple weeks off to become experts with the aggregate pipeline, instead you can use tools like this to make sure that people are getting their jobs done and learning at the exact same time. And it can be extra powerful to be able to do that type of learning while using your own data set instead of having to go through a tutorial and use a demo data set that you're not even familiar with. Um, so the last category of folks um, that we would like to talk about are uh, the people who have experience writing Mongo shell queries, people who are comfortable writing those queries, have confidence. Um, and those, are, those tend to be the people who are doing a lot of informal support, either for the folks on their team or for other teams within the organization. Um, and for these people, they're going to feel comfortable working in the shell. Um, but by using a shell that's built into a tool like co 3 t you don't have to worry about always getting your connection string set up every single time. That's all saved for you. And in this example, you can see um, that you would have uh, in this editor the visualizations of the data below it. And you can also see that you'd have syntax error highlighting. And there's also auto populate for field names, collection names, et cetera. Collection names, et cetera. But really, what you'd want to focus on with this group of users in terms of getting them properly supported with tooling is how to help them share queries. Because these are the folks that are going to be writing queries and then sharing them with other people. Or perhaps somebody on the team wrote a query. It doesn't seem to be working properly. They send it on Slack to the person who's the MongoDB expert on the team. And then this person's going to be doing a back and forth of sharing and perfecting and troubleshooting on these queries. Um, in this close-up, you can see up above the editor that there is a save button and an open file button. Um, CO3T's tools lets you uh, do proper file management because what you really want is somebody to be able to save those queries if they're running frequently in a way that they can then access those really easily. Um, we've talked to people who have all these JSON files just saved to their desktop and it's it is a bit much to try and navigate through that, but by having proper file management, you'll be able to access those queries that you need really frequently and share those 
those queries really quickly. Which brings me to um, something that CO3T has been working on. We're really excited about releasing at the beginning of the year, which is something that we're designing to make that sharing process a lot easier. Lee has worked really hard on this, so I'm going to hand over to you, Lee, to introduce this new tool that we've Yeah, on. so uh, as Becky mentioned, it's really important to be able to get uh, the scripts and queries saved. Sometimes it's because there's somebody that's on the team that needs help with maybe the aggregation framework they're less familiar with. They send it off to the expert. So we wanted to enable that kind of sharing. And we also wanted to enable teams with basically a built-in library, a repository of queries that you can use. So as Becky mentioned, if there's anything that you're doing repetitively, the more that you can have that saved so that you don't have to start from scratch each time, the better off your life is going to be. So a big part of enabling teams to work faster is being able to let teams create their own repositories of repetitive uh, queries or more complicated queries, aggregations with many stages that they can use to start up and use that as a template to then write from so you're not starting from scratch each and every time. Uh, or also something that you can kind of see where you're, maybe you have a script that needs to be iterated upon and different members of your team can go ahead and weigh in, leave comments, that kind of thing. So we have decided to actually put that kind of a repository that we see customers having just straight inside of uh, the tool that we build, Studio 3T, so that you'll be able to just add teams to a folder and they'll be able to see the entire library of scripts that you've built uh, available for your team to use. So in summary, uh, our recommendations for getting teams up and running faster uh, with MongoDB, the first is to get a GUI, any GUI. We're partial to ours, but really any GUI that lets you see your data in tabular format will work. And then also use some of these tools that make querying easier. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel from scratch. I know it's kind of taboo to talk about using SQL queries against your MongoDB data, but at the same time, uh, if it, as, as uh, was pointed out in the keynote, if it enables your team uh, and it enables your business to move faster, then it's definitely a very good stepping stone to getting on board quickly. Uh, and then also, we're, I think we have a little bit of time for questions if anybody has any questions for us. But if not, we've got a booth in the expo hall. Uh, you're also welcome to come have a chat with us there. Uh, we have a version of team sharing you can come and take a look at, which is that repository I showed in the last slide. You can go ahead and give that a whirl if you like as well. Are there any questions for us? Far away. Yeah. So the question here was, how different is our tool compared to Compass? I'll let you yeah, I'll that. take that one. So uh, there is overlapping functionality between Compass and Studio 3T, but there's also some headline features in Studio 3T that aren't in Compass. Um, a lot of the tools that we just covered in this presentation are not included. So the drag and drop tool with the drop down menu where you can choose an operator and the tool writes your query for you is in only Studio 3T. Um, the SQL querying, where you can write a query in SQL syntax, CO3T then translates that query and runs the translated query on the MongoDB database and then shows you that translation. That's also only in CO3T. There's a few other things that are um, only in CO3T, um, but feel free to come on by after uh, the presentation and we can do a, a longer demo session to show you some of those things. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Cool. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.